Time and again, America's armed services have proven themselves to be best in the world. Their success relies on training in realistic scenarios, which means full weaponry and live ordnance day and night. There is no substitute for real world finger on the pickle button, bombs coming off, missiles coming off type of training. You cannot simulate that in a simulator. Unfortunately, what is crucial to maintain military readiness can be unnerving to communities located near military bases and training areas. If we can't train our troops, if our soldiers cannot uh, do maneuvers, if they cannot fire their weapons, if we can't fly our helicopters, if we can't get our soldiers off of Fort Bragg to deploy anywhere around the world, then we don't need to be here. People call and say that uh, 2.30 this morning, uh, I was in a sound sleep. My children jumped up crying and running in because I'm having to listen to this uh, helicopter hovering over my property. The jet noise, it's all through the night till 3 in the morning, and the kids can't get any sleep. The house is shaking. I mean, it's just like you're in a war zone. The problem is not due simply to increased training. It is also the result of heavier concentrations of civilian development near and around military installations. Most of the 500 active military bases in the United States and its territories were originally located in relatively remote areas, both for security purposes and to provide ample buffers between their operations and civilian populations. Zones that were once kept clear to protect civilians from high noise levels and potential accidents are now the sites of homes, businesses, even schools and places of worship, all of which must be considered when local governments design land use plans and policies and make daily decisions regarding development. With the amount of missions that we have to do, we have to get a lot of things accomplished in a short amount of time, and anything that detracts from that, such as civilian encroachment of our range air spaces, overly restrictive procedures to get us in and out of here is going to have an impact as far as that's concerned. There's some very unique training that we must do here that causes uh, us to fly over the communities in Kentucky and in Tennessee. And many times, if you've heard the helicopters fly over, it's very loud. We've got to fire artillery pieces in the impact area, which all basically creates a noise issue with the surrounding communities. We're seeing the uh, development of communities that are uh, trying to locate along uh, corridors, and one of those being the Interstate 8 corridor, which just happens to uh, border the northern border of the Goldwater Range. Our concern is that, first and foremost, as a training range, that we retain the ability to have unfettered access to the Goldwater Range. Davis Monthan has a, a tail of two runways. The northwest end has encroachment where the city has grown up right to the boundaries of the base with uh, open desert area. Base commanders and their planners are aware of the impact of training on area residents and work to mitigate it. However, they can do only so much and still maintain the quality of their training missions. We have to be very proactive in how we handle everything we do with the community and ensure that we go out in advance, build those relationships so that when problems arise or when they're in the midst of planning, we are kept involved uh, and informed of everything that's going on and vice versa. So they understand what things we're working on because many times they have ways to help us that we didn't think about and we certainly have input to them that maybe they, they did not uh, plan for. I see the base commander as the point of contact for the interface with the community and the success or failure of that base commander with that interface uh, with the community boils down to how much he or she is willing 
direct work outside the FEMS line. Communities recognize the economic and cultural advantages of having military neighbors. They support the important jobs their bases do and take steps to protect the base through smart community planning and development. Also the alert F-16 aircraft is flying on the base. Early on, the Board of County Commissioners realized that encroachment uh, could be a major problem if we didn't take a leadership role and uh, take some action to prevent encroachment. And we knew that if it became a problem, that uh, it could impact the aviation training here to the point where the Navy uh, may decide to move aviation training out of Pensacola. The economic revenue that's generated for the state is critical to us and to our sustainability in the economy. Uh, the military industry brings in an annual revenue generation of $5.7 billion. In 1973, the Navy and the Air Force instituted ACUS, the Air Installation Compatible Use Zone Program. And the Army began what it now calls its Operational Noise Management Program. The studies produced through these programs include detailed maps of the noise footprints and accident potential zones around military installations and suggest compatible land use activities that can protect and support community economic development. In 1985, authority was enacted for the Department of Defense to provide assistance to state and local governments to plan and carry out strategies where encroachment by a civilian community is likely to impair the operations of a military installation. The Compatible Use Program incorporates the Joint Land Use Study, or JLUS, as the means for delivering this assistance and helping states and communities to understand and apply ACUS and Operational Noise Management Program data to local planning and development efforts. We went through a year, year and a half of meetings and public hearings and so forth on the, on this, on the JLUS study. Our major concern is to protect our military bases, protect our ranges and so forth, because our major issue is uh, training these pilots and uh, the men and women of the armed forces. JLUS is managed by the Department of Defense's Office of Economic Adjustment, or OEA. When an effective local or state government undertakes a JLUS, or carries it out in cooperation with a military installation, OEA may facilitate communication between the base and the affected community, provide up to 90% of the effort's cost through a grant, and offer technical assistance for the effort. The affected community provides important leadership, including financial and political support, management of the JLUS, and carries out the JLUS recommendations. The objective is to support compatible use near our military installations wherein military and community needs are met through a balanced, deliberative effort. We went to the Chamber of Commerce, we went to the Board of Realtors, we went to the building industry, and we went to the citizens, and we asked them to appoint people from their different associations to sit on those committees, which they did. We had uh, potential encroachment uh, of a subdivision that was building very close to Sabre Army Teleport, which if that had gone unchecked, it would cause a noise and light issue for our pilots that had to use the night vision devices to do their flying at night, of which they're going to do in work. And so we had to work with the, the community of uh, Clarksville that basically we ended up acquiring 130 acres of that land that stopped that because that would have infringed on our training for wartime. We were concentrating on something that was kind of unique, trying to balance three fairly um, competing and often incompatible needs. One was to sustain the training mission of Fort Bragg, where they could uh, do the training that makes lots of noise that they need to do. The other thing was we needed to try to protect the natural environment, and thirdly, then to make sure that the local governments are able to grow and have healthy growth and development. Um, but to do it in a way that doesn't uh, negatively impact on each other. I think that the joint land use study process helped to identify these issues, and then I think it helped to identify um, positive recommendations and solutions to sustain this area um, for about 50 years. 
The state or community funds and manages the development of the JLUS report with OEA financial and technical help and adopts and implements the JLUS recommendations. Local installation commanders or their designees ensure the success of a JLUS through their active participation and sharing information about current and planned military operations and needs. As a result of the joint land use study, agreements were made both by military and civilian leaders. The military were to restrict the times of flight and the altitudes of flight, the areas which they would be maneuvering in. The realtors were to uh, disclose to those who were contemplating purchase or rentals that there are low-flying aircraft that occasionally cause some loud noise when they are approaching or when they're uh, touch and go or maneuvering. U of A Science and Tech Park, uh, located about 30,000 feet at the southeast end of our runway, belongs to the University of Arizona and uh, it's a technical science park where they do development and research. Also in there, there is a chartered school belonging to the Vail School District, and uh, we've been working very diligently with them to relocate that school, which they are going to do within the next two years. The Department of Defense has programs to ensure the sustainability of bases and ranges and relieve encroachment pressures. The Office of the Secretary of Defense's Readiness and Environmental Protection Initiative, RIPI, allows military departments to partner with state and local government agencies and non-governmental organizations to establish buffer zones near training and testing areas. These programs, combined with the JLUS program, add important tools to the compatible land use toolkit. If we continue to plan and we can help them bring in the right types of development around the base and, and help them plan where to do res residential development so that we can prevent incompatible land uses and help plan for compatible use so that we can develop and grow together. JLUS is an opportunity for states and communities to respond to the pressing issues of encroachment. Just as important, it also provides the catalyst for true partnerships between civilian and military neighbors partnerships that are invaluable for discussing other important issues. Along the way, the people involved are learning lessons that other communities and military installations can use. A JLUS can make recommendations that a state or community can implement to exist compatibility with an active military installation, helping to sustain the military presence. Implementation recommendations could include comprehensive planning, zoning regulations, modifications to local institutional controls, acquisition of property, conservation buffers, transfer of development rights, application of more restrictive subdivision and building codes, sound attenuation techniques, and real estate disclosures. Those outcomes help to prevent local incompatible development from impairing our defense missions activities. It has worked here so well that I have every feeling that it would be very helpful in any other military community that tries it. We had some good recommendations come out of the study and the elected officials were able to act on that and as a result I think we've had a real success story here and I'm very happy for our community and I think we've seen some wonderful results.